Most of my robots have a feature I don't like. They power on with a jerk. In this video, I want to explore why and how I can fix it. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, robotics, IoT, and other fun tech. When my robots first start up, they do this quick and violent motion. Remember Robot Santa? Well, I've never shown you its startup sequence. Scary, isn't it? This motion happens while the servers move to a known position. After that, things are fine. That initial jerk is caused because I don't know where the servos are, so I can't help them move slowly and gently to a new location. I have no feedback. We hide that problem most of the time using delays in my code. So we make an assumption that the servos will have moved within a second or half a second. So we fake the feedback on position using delays. That doesn't always work. I've read on several blogs that adding a feedback fourth wire to a standard servo is quick and simple. Today I'm going to try it and connect it to a Pico. So the Pico can move the servo and know when it has reached its target position. Let's take a look. Please do like the video and subscribe for more. I do appreciate it. So to fix this issue, we need to understand a little bit about how a servo actually works. Just in a little bit of detail, I'm not gonna go into all of the electronics. The servo I'm going to use in this video is going to be the SG90. This is a nine gram, or what, nine G servo. And they're little tiny plastic servos. They're really cheap. Um, and therefore they're disposable because what we're going to do here does have some risk in damaging the servo. I've touched on servos before in a short talking about how to actually control them and in the Robot Santa videos talking about how I was using those to control the head. Basically we send a square waveform to the servo and the width of the pulse dictates what angle the servo is going to move to. Inside the servo, we've got lots of gears, a motor, a potentiometer, and some electronics. So basically the motor's there to actually do the movement. And we use then the potentiometer to measure what angle the motor has actually moved to. And of course, connecting both of those together and the output shaft is a little gearbox. Then we need a brain. The brain has to work out from the pulse width coming in, whether it needs to uh, leave the servo where it is or turn it to the left or turn it to the right. And that's using a bit of a comparator, but I'm not gonna go into the electronics. Now it's this potentiometer we want to work with because if we can actually get the value that it's using to, to compare to, because uh, it's just a voltage that's coming off that potentiometer, then we could actually measure what the position of a servo is. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Do you find soldering your PCBs hard? I certainly do. So why not use PCBWay to not only fabricate your PCBs, but assemble them too? PCBWay strive to be the most professional PCB manufacturer for prototyping and low volume production work in the world, which makes them a go-to place for makers like me to help me fabricate and assemble my low volume PCBs in their own in-house production services. PCBWay have lots of options for PCB types and coatings, along with instant quotation through their website for most services. They can help with project hardware too, through 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal work, or injection molding. Get some inspiration from their community project site, or buy some ready-made modules from the module store. Go take another look at PCBWay today. As the servo turns, it's this potentiometer that measures the position. If we look at the value coming off the center of that potentiometer, we can see a voltage change as the uh, servo moves to different positions. So let's add a tap onto that center of that uh, potentiometer. Now we're gonna have to therefore take our servo apart. Now these are quite delicate, do be careful. There are basically two bolts at the back of the servo which allow you to take them back, um, take them apart. They are quite long. The bolts free up both the back and the front of the servo. So both the back where um, the uh, 
PCB is and the front where the gearbox is. Now you want to be really careful that you do not open the front at this point. Um, when you do, getting all of those gears back together is a little bit of a pain and uh, not always possible for me. So um, be really careful that you only open up the back. And then we can see the PCB and we can see the three part taps coming off of the uh, potentiometer of which is the center one that we're interested in adding a wire to. So now I'm going to solder a wire onto that center one. This isn't easy, it is quite fiddly and I've killed one of these doing this. So do be careful, it comes with a health warning, but um, that's what we need to do if we want to get that feedback. Now we can read that voltage as the servo moves. So we can then plug that into our Pico and get our Pico to read it and therefore understand the position of the servo. I've included all of the code for today on my GitHub account in the Project RPI Pico Servo Feedback. So over on the repo, I've actually not got very much code here at all. Um, it's really all around this class servo. So servo we're setting up, we're giving it a GPIO port that it's going to use to actually control the servo. That's where it's going to send out those uh, pulse width um, signal. And we're also giving it, or optionally giving it, a ADC. So which of the three ADC channels available on the Pico are we going to use for, for this particular servo? Um, if we choose to use none of them, the code will actually handle that and uh, get, just fake some values back. So we have the ability here to move to a particular angle in uh, degrees. I'm using degrees in this example, you know, Purely, if I'm going to be working in robotics, I probably should be on SI units and we should be talking in radians, but I'm going to stick to degrees for this example. Um, I can turn my servo off. Um, I'll show you why in a little while. But really, what we're going to talk about today is this function here, get degrees. So get feedback of where is the uh, angle. And as long as I've got an ADC port, I'm going to actually do that by measuring the voltage. If I haven't got one, I'll just give you what the last target was that I was set at. So no real feedback, just a guess of, we're probably going, you said to go to there, so I'm probably there already. Well, that isn't often true, so that could be problematic, which is why we're trying to get feedback. So let's have a look at um, the code on here. And really it's all the code I want to look at is about this get degrees. And here I've, I've written in the top of here actually the voltages I was reading. So if I was the center of the servo at 90 degrees, I was getting 1.66 volts. At 180, I was getting 2.76 volts. And at zero, I'm getting 0 0.56 volts. And so basically I'm going to use that to uh, and this nice standard calculation to actually calculate what is the voltage that I'm reading off of that servo. So what that then that voltage represents its position. Um, I can then use those readings that I've got above to convert that into an angle uh, as in degrees and return that. And that's all it's doing. It's fairly simple code. Um, just mention uh, I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm just checking if the ADC is not within normal parameters, then I'm presuming there is no ADC. Uh, associated with this uh, servo and I'm just going to return the target position. So let's have a look at main. So this main function is going to basically just move two servos through a set of um, angles. You've seen me on the demo already, you saw it with the multimeter next to it. But this time I'm actually going to read back the position by reading that voltage. So only the second servo has the ADC connected to it, as you see, and the ADC is on channel two. So I've got a loop here where I'm basically going to keep instructing the servos to go between 0, 90 and 180. And um, then each time I'm going to, uh, for the next uh, few milliseconds, keep printing out the position as read back from that servo using that to get degrees. So I should see 
the uh, servos actually moving and see the, the different angles that they're going to. It won't be absolutely perfectly uh, reading, you know, 90 degrees by the end of this because there are quite a lot of errors in this. But it gives you, it is quite close actually when you look at the values and I'll show you those in a second. So that's all this code is doing really. We're just moving to the angle and we're printing very quickly the set of uh, values uh, as the servo moves. So looking at the output from the code, we can see the servo actually moves. So we can see the instruction go and the servo slowly, uh, well, actually quite quickly move to the position. Notice the target position that we reach is not exactly what we set and what are, are trying to get to. There is a little bit of an error because we're doing ADC here, analog to digital conversion. It isn't perfect, but actually it's pretty close. I do have a second example actually on in this repo, which is this servo mirror example. And this is doing something really, really very dodgy. Because what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn off that second servo. So it shouldn't be powered. And then I'm going to manually back drive it. And I'm basically going to keep reading the position from the second servo. And then I'm going to make the first servo move to the same angle. So I'm almost using a servo as a controller to uh, change the other servo. This is not a great idea. These servos are not designed to be back driven you risk damaging the uh, cogs and the gearbox considerably by doing this, but I'm just doing it to show you that this is actually working and that actually I, you can get a reading that is relatively accurate and then make the other servo move to the same angle. So here I'm yanking this servo around. I am trying to be careful and not completely ruin the gearbox, but again, do not do this. But you can see as I move it, the other servo is moving nicely to the same position, even though the camera is slightly out of focus, sorry. What I've done today is a little bit of a hack. Opening servos and soldering on additional wires comes at some risk. For full disclosure, I did kill a servo in the process. Not surprisingly with the soldering though, but running the servo with the back open, my gearbox exploded on me and I couldn't get all of the gears back in again. So there are some risks in this. Fortunately, nine gram servos are cheap. High-end servos do have this feedback built in. I'll talk about some of those in a future video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Please do also subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next video. Goodbye for now.